So the first bosses I wanted to test are the Slayer bosses. And as you might know, you can't just kill these right away. You have to get a task in order to kill them. So I also tested the spells on all the Slayer tasks we did uh, on the way there. And overall, as you'll see in these clips, there's literally no downside to using these unless you maybe you want to save some money. It's not the most cost effective spell to use. But as far as uh, getting tasks done quicker, especially in places where you can't use a cannon, this is a godsend. As you can see, Death Charge works like this, where you just cast it and it'll give you a message. And then once you defeat an enemy, that special attack will be restored instantly. Overall, this is pretty much an essential if you're not using Ancients or uh, High Alchemy, which nowadays the banks are so easy to get to. So if you needed to make a couple extra trips banking, it's not much of a deal. I think the Archaea spellbook is worth. I would give this a 10 out of 10 on any Slayer task, because keep in mind, you can use these on pretty much every task you could possibly get in the game. So very useful. So the first Slayer boss I got as a task was the Kraken. And as you can see, this is the gear I'll be using. Uh, I'll be using max gear in pretty much all of these just to test things. And to be fair, you'll probably see better results when you use a lower tier setup anyways, because kill times will be longer and that means the Thrall will be able to do a little bit more work for you. So take what you can from this video. Since you can only damage the Kraken boss with magic, I figured the Ghost Thrall would be the the one to use, right? But it appears that you need a Slayer level. Well, your ghost needs a Slayer level to damage the Kraken because it does not hit anything on the boss. And I'm not sure if this is a bug or not, or if it's intended, but the Thrall doesn't work on the Kraken. However, the Death Charge spell does. So if you're using a Volatile, bring Death Charge. Okay, so for the Gargoyles, this is my setup that I used and I'm gonna be honest, I wasn't sure how this was gonna go because most of the time you don't need DPS, you need uh, high alks to alk all the stuff that you get from this boss. Cause usually uh, you can stay here for quite a long time. The first thing I noticed off the bat was that the range thrall worked on Dawn, which is beautiful. I could not be more happy about that cause I can't tell you how many problems I've had with Dawn not being able to do enough DPS in the P2 where she heals herself. Anything I can do to make that chance of her healing a little bit lower is something I would gladly take. Now you'll notice in the P1 that the skeleton does not hit the melee, which is to be expected because he can only be damaged with melee normally. So I figured that would be the case. You can summon a zombie thrall if you would like and it will start hitting him, but uh, I, th I think it's a waste. I feel like if you're gonna use this, you should be using the skeleton on Dawn because for this P2 part, you just want the most damage you can possibly get so you can avoid that heal. Something that was a little disappointing was that the death charge spell did not work on the gargoyles. Didn't work on either one. And that right there kind of defeats the whole purpose of using the spell buck at this boss. The thrall is nice for the DPS on dawn so i mean you do have that but you also lose the high alchemy spell one work around that is if you have the explorer's ring available if you have the hard diary then you get 30 free charges of high alchemy per day if you just bring the ring and you don't need to be on the spell book so you could bring that if you uh wanted to i also tried this in a little bit of a lower tier setup what i think you'll find in a lot of these uh comparisons is that the worse your gear is the more utility you'll see from these spells and specifically the thralls because if you have lower dps then the thralls will be making up for that because they'll be out for longer now i wanted to do a small sample size of vengeance versus the thralls because i was curious if vengeance would prove to be better than the thralls because with the thralls you have to summon four of them per kill to get the full amount of utility from them and with vengeance you could just pretty much spam that the whole time of the kills that i had time to do it seems like they're pretty similar i mean there wasn't a whole lot of discrepancy between the times since there wasn't a huge difference with vengeance i figure it's probably just not worth bringing the thralls here because vengeance is a whole lot cheaper so if you're going for faster times you may as well just bring vengeance because to get the thrall times i was casting it four times every kill because of the melee to range to melee thing which is also 24 prayer points as well and 20 blood runes so <laughs> I don't think it's worth it. So in my opinion, the Archaea spellbook is not worth it at the Guardians. Next up is perhaps my favorite boss to use these new spells on, and that is the Thermonuclear Smoke Devil. Now, pretty much anytime you're using Dragon Claws with the Death's Charge spell, uh, it's just gonna be extra Dragon Claw specs. Who doesn't like that? And the reason why I like this boss so much with the Thrall spells is because the Thrall spells require six prayer points per cast. So six prayer points every minute, that's 360 prayer points per hour. 
there's already a lot of wasted prayer points anyways, because when redemption procs, your prayer points go back to zero. So as long as you time the thrall uh, in between that before it procs, then it's basically free. Besides for the cost of the runes, it's just bonus DPS that you'll be doing to the boss. And also it's fun because the respawn time is so fast. Just try it out. You're going to love it here. In fact, I love this task so much with the new spells that I actually, I finished the whole task. I didn't cancel it. So if that's not evidence enough that these spells are good, I don't know what is. Moving on. So next up is the Abyssal Sire. And if you've ever killed this boss before, you're probably guessing that these spells are not going to be that good at the boss because you need ancient magics to efficiently kill this boss. Otherwise, you're going to have a bad time. Even though my hopes are a little low for this boss, we're doing this for science. So we have to give it a shot. As for the gear, we're using max strength with the arc light as well as the mage setup. And then I brought the volatile orb to spec because... I usually don't have one, so I figured this is this is a great place to use it. <laughs> and the first thing I noticed was that my ghost was just not attacking the boss. And it tried going for the vents, but because this area is so spread out, it, it couldn't reach it. So then I summoned it again, but by that time, I had already pretty much killed it anyways. So, so far, not looking good. But I thought, you know, maybe Jagex just didn't code it that way because usually people use Ancients to stun the boss instead of damaging it. So maybe that was just like an oversight or something. And then phase two came down and my ghost started attacking it, which is good. But as you'll notice, it did not hit more than a zero. This is exactly what happened with the Kraken boss. The ghost was attacking the boss, but it did not do any damage. On the bright side, the death charge spell does work on the little minions that come out. So, I mean, I guess that's good. But then I summoned another thrall on P3. And what do you know? It actually started hitting the boss. So I'm wondering for P1 and P2, if it was just a, if it's just a bug or something. So it does work on P3, but considering that's the only use you get out of it, it's not worth bringing, just bring ancients. And also, I just want to say, if you think of any uh, tactics or uh, alternative setups to what I'm testing, then feel free to let me know in the comments and uh, we can test that out at some other point. The next Slayer boss is Cerberus. And I don't have Inquisitor right now, so I'm just using Bandos. I know, uh, rich people problems, right? My hypothesis for Cerberus was that it's gonna be really good. You don't really need Alks, you don't really need Ancients, and more Dragon Claw specs, as well as uh, extra damage on the boss is just gonna be very welcome. And surprise, surprise, these spells rip at Cerb. Honestly, it made Cerb a lot more fun because you have more things going on. Obviously there's extra damage going on and you also have the extra claw specs. It's overall really good. And considering each Cerberus kill is about a minute long, uh, it's the perfect time to be using the death charge spell. It's really perfect. And I forgot to mention, because they changed Cerberus to a demon boss recently, it means we could test out another spell as well called Ward of Arceus. Now, when you cast this spell, it lasts for one minute and it reduces damage from demons by 10%. You lose one inventory slot because you need to bring nature runes, but I think it is worth it because damage reduction just means you're gonna be able to stay here longer. I also had the chance to try out another spell called Demonic Offering. This spell converts the new demonic ashes that you get from demons into prayer XP, as well as a few prayer points. At level 99, a four dose super restore gives you 136 prayer points. Since you get a whopping two prayer points per infernal ash, that means you'll need to kill 68 Cerberus in one trip in order for it to be worth more than a super restore. So Demonic Offering, is not worth it unless you have alts that are running you supplies so you can just stay here indefinitely or if you'd prefer to have the extra prayer xp because it does give you a lot although a little anecdote here is that the spell cannot be used while in combat so you have to be really quick because cerberus respawns really fast so i don't know that one's up to you now the big question is whether it is worth sacrificing five inventory slots to use all these spells. And my answer would be yes. You can always use the suicide method where you die with a bunch of supplies while scold right in the boss room. So you have extra supplies for your trip. Word of Arceus reduces damage from the auto attacks. So that one's worth bringing. And then of course, death charge and the thrall spells are also worth bringing. That's more DPS. Even if you brought like an SGS or something instead of claws, so you can heal up your uh, HP and prayer points, I think it would still be extremely good. And if you're going for longer trips, that'll be a better setup for you regardless overall the archaea spell books slap here oh hello it's a new item boys look at that now on to the final slayer boss which is the alchemical hydra the first thing you'll notice is that death charge spell just doesn't work 
uh, alchemical hydra. Uh, I, I have a feeling that this is a bug because I, I can't really think of any good reason why it wouldn't work. Luckily, the thrall does work at the alchemical hydra. So you still get the extra DPS from that. And it's actually kind of good because sometimes you have to wait a couple ticks for the hydra to go onto the vent and then lower its defense so you can start hitting full damage. So it'll still be doing some damage while that happens. Now, is it worth sacrificing four or five inventory slots so you can bring these spells? Because once you start getting all the prayers right at hydra, you really don't take a lot of damage, especially more damage than the blowpipe can heal. Not to mention the supply drops that hydra drops anyways. Now, most high level setups highly depend on prayer drain because the longer you can stay here, the more kills per hour you can get because banking actually takes quite a while. Giving up four inventory slots that you could use for super stores means you're losing 544 prayer points. Plus you also have the extra drain from the thralls as well which is another 360 prayer points per hour. So taking this setup for an hour long trip means you're losing 900 prayer points. So unless you have an alt to uh, run supplies for you and help bank stuff, I don't know if it's worth it. You also have to consider that you're losing the high alchemy spell. And if you've ever killed Hydra, this thing prints money and it prints a lot of alchemals. So you're losing that as well. Because of those reasons, I don't think that the Archaea spellbook is viable at Hydra, at least right now. Wow, of course, I get a second Hydra tail in 1000 KC. Next, I wanted to try the spellbook at Jad. And normally for speed runs, people use Vengeance because you're reflecting that damage and it's gonna be adding up over time to get you a faster run. Now, inventory space isn't that important. However, the lack of vengeance could be a deal breaker on whether this is worth using or not. For one, the cost of the runes is gonna be higher than vengeance. But on the other hand, you have more control over your DPS because of the thralls. Because vengeance is two hits every minute if you're on time with your vengeance every time. And it could be a one, it could be a 30. There's, there's not much knowing or it could proc on something that was already getting hit by you in the first place instead of the thing you wanted it to proc on whereas the thralls give you a little bit more control and for that reason i think they might be the way to go in terms of speed running but uh, it's it's kind of a close call. Since I haven't done many fight cave speed runs, uh, I don't know if I'd be able to calculate whether one is worth it over the other, but what I can tell you is that the thralls were not bad. There is one downside to using the thralls, and that is because the room is so big that it usually takes a few ticks for the skeleton or mage to walk up to your enemy, and sometimes you might just kill the enemy before it even gets there, which isn't a huge deal, I still think it's worth using. You really start to see some of the drawbacks as you get into a bigger room, which you'll you'll notice is a common trend among all these bosses. The bigger the room is, the harder it is for your thrall to keep up with you, especially if the enemies have low HP. As far as the death charge spell, uh, I think it's good. The blowpipe specs were very nice, and of course, uh, they don't always hit, but what they do, you have the chance to hit like a 50 or 60. They're very good. They also heal you. It might be worth trying out some different weapons, maybe some dragon knives and just spamming the spec that way. Uh, maybe a ballista. Again, I'm not an expert on speedrunning fight caves. If that's something you'd like me to investigate, <laughs> then uh, I guess I'll become a professional speedrunner and spend all my bank on black chins. Yes, we did get a new PB on that Jad kill with the Archaea spellbook. I think it is a top contender for speedruns. So if there are any Fight Cave speedrunners that are watching this video, please go give it a few tries, see what you can do with it, and uh, I'll leave you guys to it to decide whether it is better than Vengeance. Now for the Inferno, I thought I would give it a shot because uh, I honestly think it is possible to get an Inferno Cape with the Archaea spellbook. Whether that is more efficient than using Agents is up for debate, but as far as possibility, I think it is definitely in the bag. So the way I'm kind of theorizing this Arceus spellbook run in the Inferno is that you use the Blowpipe, the Eldritch Orb, or the SGS as your primary healing method. Since you'll constantly be casting Death Charge throughout the Inferno on every NPC you can, you should have an abundance of special attack energy, if not unlimited, especially if you decide to wait it out, uh, you're low HP and you need to just heal up. Yeah, Death Charge, amazing for the inferno the thralls are going to be insanely good here as well but the thing is they cost six prayer points and only last a minute even if you're an absolute master guru at prayer flicking you're still going to notice a significant drain on your prayer supplies which is exactly why i brought the eldritch orb and the occult necklace just as a means so if i really need to i can just restore my prayer points by camping death charge and waiting. Having not really done the Inferno much on the main game in the last year, I didn't expect to get very far in this. This is mostly just a test to see just how things are 
with the new spellbook. So if you're looking to be the world first Arceus spellbook Inferno run, then be my guest. So Adicon, a cold one, I'm looking at you guys. Go figure that out. As of right now, I couldn't find any information on whether you can use the thralls on Zuck. I'm assuming it'll be pretty damn good. So we'll just have to wait and see. The next boss I did was the giant mole. The thrall did seem to hit pretty consistently on it. So that was pretty nice, but the boss has so little HP that with the T-Bow or maybe if you're using like Darox or something, I don't think it really makes that big of a difference to justify the cost in using it. I mean, if you'd like to use it, go ahead. And like we've seen before at other bosses with big spanning areas, especially one that digs around into a random place, the Thrall is just not that much help here. Death Charge was actually pretty decent here, I would say, because you get the kills so fast that you're always gonna be able to proc it. In fact, I tried out the Ballista just to see how it was, but I think like with the Tebow, it's going to be hard to tell if it's better or not. If you're using Darox, you could probably bring Death Charge with an AGS because it has a higher chance to start digging when there are more hit spots on it. So you don't want to bring Claws or DDS. You want to bring a, a solid one hitting weapon like the AGS. Well, that's pretty much all for the mold. The next place I went to was the Deranged Archaeologist because it's not like anyone actually kills this boss. But in case you want to know whether it's good here, I would say the Arceus spell books are definitely worth bringing here. If you're going for like a rank one deranged archaeologist kills, then you bring the volatile with the max mage setup and the sang, and then the thralls just add extra damage. Yeah, I think it's worth it. I mean, I, I saw no downside except for, you know, the cost and you're killing a boss that you're not going to make money. But again, if you're camping this boss anyways, you probably don't care too much about that. So that's all there is for that. Next up is everyone's favorite tribe ridding bosses. And that is the Dagonoth Kings. Now losing four extra spaces to bring the runes instead of maybe sand serums or something was definitely noticeable, but the spells do make up for it. Using death charge with the SGS is just an enjoyable experience to say the least. Pretty much every cycle you can spec. The thralls were amazing despite the prayer drain. I tended to use the skeleton or the ghost because the zombie has to walk up and attack them. Besides for the prayer drain, there really isn't any downside to killing these. However, the thing about DKs is that if you're in max gear on a slayer task, you're usually waiting around for them to respawn so i'm not sure if the thralls are entirely necessary but they could be very useful if you're a lower level or you just don't have the best gear death charge was a huge plus especially if you use the sgs i actually did a second trip with the eldritch orb because i figured i don't really need the health that much and if i really need it i could just use the sgs spec because we're getting so much special attack from this spell it's not a huge deal and we also have the saying staff as well the Eldritch Orb is just a nice commodity if you just happen to have it, but the SGS does more than enough for healing and prayer restoration. Overall, because of the slower respawn times and because I was in max gear, I didn't notice too much of a difference with the thralls. You could probably just skip those and only bring the special attack spell. If you're a lower level or you're using more of a budget setup, I would recommend using the thrall spells because they're just gonna get that more damage off. Especially if you don't have a Tebow, they're gonna be really good on the mage. So Archaea spells at the Dagadoth Cakes, I would put these at a B tier. Also for anyone wondering about my luck, I killed these for like an hour and a half and I'm still cursed. No drops. The next boss I wanted to test was the rabbit a little bit north of Perfdinus. It's a level two rabbit with 2000 HP. Hits like a truck. So, I mean, it is technically a boss. I was hoping that you could use these here because I think they would be really good, but you can't use them here. There's a magical force that won't let you resurrect thralls. And I think that has something to do with the lore. I'm not 100% sure, but that's that. Next, we have one of the uh, most fun mid-tier to low-level bosses, and that is Seracnus. Seracnus is a really good contender for using the spells because one, she summons the minions to do damage on you, so you can't really use vengeance here, and trips don't tend to last like super long, or you could just bank with an ult if you really wanted to. The only negatives is once again the inventory space and the prayer management. It's really not that bad, you just might bring one or two extra restores, or like I said, if you have an alt account or a friend to bring you supplies, it totally makes up for the damage that you'll be able to do with the death charge spell as well as the thrall. You'll notice in this first trip, I forgot to use the death charge spell. So this is just with the thrall and my kill times were 
quite a bit faster. I mean, they're already very speedy with the scythe, but the thrall just gives it that little bit extra damage. The kills are like 30 seconds to a minute long, so you do get a lot of benefit from using the thrall. And if you couldn't guess, the death charge spell is also extremely good here. You just get more dragon claw specs, stack that with the damage from the thrall, and you're getting significantly faster kill times, maybe about 10%, 20% faster. And I would just like to remind you again that even though I'm in max gear, you should be seeing even more benefit from these spells in lower tier gear or if you're a lower level. So the final verdict at Serachnus is go wild with it. Use the spells. This is one of the better places to use them at. The next boss I tested was Calphite Queen. And if you know anything about this boss, you're just going to take damage no matter what gear you have or what level you are. But the good thing is the Arceus spellbook, I think, is better than Vengeance. And that's because this is a multi-zone. You have other cow fights attacking you. So you can't always get the vengeance off unless you're making sure to always lure it perfectly and time it and all that. I'm way too lazy for that. So the thralls and the death charge spell is a much better option for me. The only thing that might be a deal breaker is the loss of four inventory slots. Because as you know, this thing just burns food like no other boss. And those four anglerfish might get you an extra kill or two. But then again, having the extra special attack and the damage from the thrall will most likely make up for that. So my money is on the Arceus spellbook. I think it's an upgrade here. I also tried a different setup. I tried the melee and range setup, even though I don't have the head yet for the diary. But regardless, I tested out both methods. I even tried it solo and I still got the same results with that as well. So my personal recommendation is yes, use the Arceus spellbook at the Calfight Queen. Next up is Zolra, and that is because, well, Zolra's a snake that must be killed. If you've ever killed Zolra before, you know that vengeance is a big deal here for getting faster kills. It's not super hard to time. I mean, the snakelings do hit you and you have a uh, ring of recoil, ring of suffering for that purpose anyways. But usually you can time the venge when it's on the mage phase because it might shoot that range attack at you that you won't be able to predict. So I was a little skeptical as to whether the thralls would be better here. The special attack weapon I'm using is the volatile orb just because, uh, you know, why not? <laughs> Death charge does proc on the snakelings, which is a good thing. But the thing is, if you're using the setup I'm using, which is just, you know, a mage to range setup, you're only going to get two specs in anyways, which is exactly the same as the amount of specs you'd get without death charge. So Death charge is kind of useless in that sense. As I was watching this, I actually had an idea to go try the dark bow. So that is what this footage is now. So I tried the dark bow as a spec weapon, but I came to the conclusion that the Arceus spellbook, you're, you're not going to see any difference from just using vengeance because at most you probably get like two death charges per kill, which is equal to 30%. And that's not enough to have a third dark bow spec. If it was, then maybe it would be good. So if you're speed running Zora, then the thralls are not going to make a big enough difference and you're not going to get that much utility from the spec spell. So you're better off using vengeance if you're speed running Zora. Also, there's another thing to consider, and that is if you're speed running, you are most likely going to want to use the harmonize orb with fire surge. So yeah, I don't think the RK a spellbook will be used for speed running. Most people don't really care about speed running. They care about kills per hour. So that's what I wanted to test. Since you generally want to bank as little as possible, the Arceus spellbook actually might be good because you won't be regenerating your spec every kill like you will in speedruns. So you'll see a lot more benefit from death charge as well as the thralls because you just always be casting that. And if you're going for longer trips, then most people bring the blowpipe, which heals you. So you're going to have more blowpipe specs to last longer. Again, like most of the tests I've done in this video so far, the worse your gear is, the more benefit you're going to see from the Arceus spellbook because if you're doing lower DPS. That means you'll have the thrall out for longer. You'll get more special attacks. But again, there's also the cost and the inventory spaces to consider. I think vengeance still might be better than the thrall spells, unfortunately. So at Zora, I'll probably say just use vengeance. It's cheaper. <laughs> so next I went to test Vorkath with the new spellbook. And right off the bat, uh, I noticed that you could not summon a thrall here, which is a huge downside. And that right there just told me this, this has no viability whatsoever. And then mid kill, I also remembered that you need the crumble undead spell to even hit the uh, little zombie spawn that comes out. So don't bring it to Vorkath. While demonic gorillas aren't really a boss, I consider them as kind of like a demi boss, if you will. If you'll notice, the thrall does hit on them. And I highly suggest you use the mage one if you are going to do these because the death charge spell works on it as well. 
So if you bring an SGS, that's really nice for staying for longer trips. You get extra special attacks, which means more SGS, which means longer trips. So by all means, use it. The only thing you might be missing is a high alchemy spell, which you can always offset by using an explorer's ring uh, with the 30 free high alchemies per day. So don't forget about that. There was a slight problem that happened when I was killing these. Whenever the mage would change its prayer, somehow they would just stop attacking me it basically just stopped the monkey from aggroing me or something so maybe he it's something to do with the code uh, i'm imagining it's some sort of bug i already reported it you feel free to report it as well so we can figure it out if it is a bug yeah it seems weird besides for that i really liked using the rks spellbook here i think it's a plus and since we're testing every boss in this video, I figure I may as well go test Scotizo. And right off the bat, you'll see that the ghost is actually hitting Scotizo, which is good. Uh, especially if you're a low level or you are an Iron Man or something, this might be this might be worth using. However, this first kill, I used the Tebow, and I've never killed this with a Tebow before, and I didn't know how strong it was. So I didn't get that much interesting anecdotes from this kill. So I baked the Tebow and grabbed a more realistic setup. Since Scotizo is such a situational boss, I can't see this being used a ton but the ghost does work on it the death charge spell does not work on the eyeballs but it does work on scotizo himself as well as those little demon minions that spawn but it's not really that useful unless you're in for a long fight and you don't have a pool then it's probably not worth using death charge and i didn't even bother testing the magic setup like i used for zami and cerberus because scotizo's magic level is higher than both of those bosses so there's no point. And I'm going to assume that the Ward of Arceus spell works on him also. I forgot to test that one in the video, but I'm just going to assume that that works here as well. And then I took the Arceus spell book to his spory, and I double clawed at the start of the kill like a dumbass because I haven't killed this thing in so long, but I figure I may as well include it in the video just so you guys can see. And the Thrall does do damage on it, so that's good. And you also proc the spec spell off of the flowers, in case anyone was wondering. So... Honestly, it's best in slot here. <laughs> now, I wanted to get every single boss in this video, and that includes Obor and Bryophyta. They're technically bosses, even though they're super easy to kill. So the first thing I wanted to try was cannoning these hill giants in the new dungeon in Shazian. You can put a cannon down here, and you can also use thralls as well. You can also get ancient shards down here. I'm not sure if you can get totem pieces, but for sure you can get ancient shards. I, I did get one in this. So anyways, I got myself a giant key and then I went across the dungeon to the other room with the moss giants, got myself a mossy key and then headed over to the giant bosses. So as you can see, this is the setup I brought for Obor. Uh, I brought no equipment and uh, I just brought like some Guthix rest to eat. And that's all I brought. It's Obor. And wouldn't you know it, the ghost works on Obor, so if that is ever a thing that you need to know, then yes, it does work in Obor. So it's probably best in slot here. I'll, I'll just go out and say it. It's probably best in slot. Also, Death Charge worked when I killed him, so there's that as well. I took the exact same setup to Bryophyta, although this time I brought a spec weapon, the handy dandy Rune Claws. If you didn't know, they are the only rune item to have a spec weapon, so... I thought it'd be fun to use. I don't know. It's, it's stupid. It's really stupid. <laughs> As you will notice, the Thrall is hitting Bryophyta, and the Thrall also hits the little spawns that come out and attack you. And then the last thing you need to know is that that charge works on the little spawns, and it also works on Bryophyta as well. Like I said, I wanted to do every boss, so that's why these two made it into the video. Next up, I tested the skilling bosses because you just never know. Maybe they work here. I, I mean, I don't know. I just wanted to give them a shot because they're bosses. And you are not able to summon a Thrall at Zalcano. Same thing for Winter Tote. You can't use a Thrall at Winter Tote as well. So mystery solved. And then the same thing goes for the new fishing boss that was released earlier this year. So... There you go. Okay, now let's move on to the four God Wars dungeon bosses, starting with Armadale. Right off the bat, I found that both spells were very nice for getting kill count if you don't have an ecumenical key, especially with Arma, where it usually takes like 10 minutes. I found that the Thrall was very nice to have that extra DPS. Now, when it came to the actual boss, I was a little concerned because usually you bring ancient magics and blood barrage to heal off the minions because you know, if you've ever killed this boss, it is a long, slow kill, even with chins. And and the minions just, no matter what gear you're using, they just hit you and you need to heal. So having Blood Barrage to heal up after the fight is done is unquestionable. 
you'd never think to bring anything else. But my findings were much different than my initial hypothesis. Because the thing is, Arma has really high defense, but the Thrall ignores enemies' defense and only rolls off of its attack stat. And it actually hits most of the time. If you've ever crossbowed Arma, then you know that sometimes you hit really big and often, and then other times you'll be sitting there on that last hit and you just can't get it for like three minutes. RNG just really plays a factor here because of its high defense. The special attack spell, on the other hand, gives you extra blowpipe specs, which is one of your primary healing methods for this boss since we don't have Blood Barrage. I honestly didn't notice a huge difference from Blood Barrage. The trips were about the same, if not a little bit longer in the few that I did compared to the trips where I would use Ancient Magics. I'm gonna put this at S tier. It pretty much replaces Blood Barrage, it's cheaper, and you get faster kills. So in my book, that's an S. Moving on to the second God Wars boss, which is Zami. This first attempt is going to be a little bit different because there's actually another spell that I haven't used yet called Dark Demon Bane. This one is an attacking spell that has an additional 25% damage and accuracy if you use it on a demon. To get that full effect, you also need to cast Mark of Darkness as well, which makes your enemy vulnerable to the effects of the Arceus spellbook. Basically, you cast Mark of Darkness and then you start attacking with Dark Demon Bane. And then, of course, since Zami is a a demon. I also use Ward of Arceus. We get the damage reduction from that. I have the Thrall to help me out as well. And I'm using the Staff of the Dead. Now, the reason I'm using this staff, because it's actually one of the few magic weapons in the game that can autocast Arceus spells. I could have gone with maybe the Kodai or something, but I figured the Staff of the Dead is the most useful because of its special attack, which reduces all melee damage by 50% for one minute. So this also gives us some use for death charge as well. Overall, I think this is a pretty solid mage setup. Now, I am on a Slayer task and I have the Imbued Heart. I have pretty much every bonus I can think of. I'm in max gear as well, but there is a problem. The kills are slow. I'm just not hitting. Now, when I actually do hit, it is uh, a high number. I think the highest I've seen is like a 48. But again, I'll speed this kill up a little bit and just, just see how many times I splash on Zami. It just It's unreal. I'm in the best setup you can use. And the spell actually does hit. You can hit high numbers with it. I think the problem is that the Zami boss has some really high magic defense. And I actually went back and tested this on Cerberus as well. And you can see I'm getting the same results. The spell just does not give you enough accuracy to get over that magic defense, so it ends up being useless. Also, another problem with solo maging is that if you bring brews, you're brewing down a lot, so your magic level is going down. So then when you try to cast a spell again, you have to like make sure you're restored. It's just really annoying. And honestly, this method was just, it was just not fun. It's just not fun at all. It needs a lot of work. Another thing I wanted to try was using a tank setup because there's one high level method that uses an alt as a tank with an Ellie full justy and you pray mage, or you might just have a friend that you want to duo with and they're tanking. My theory is that this is going to be very broken. This is because you get 15% damage reduction from the justy and then you add on the 10% from the ward of our chaos. And now I have a 42.5% damage reduction. <laughs> with this gear not to mention these insane defense bonuses i'm thinking it'll be pretty good now as you can see i'm pretty much just afking uh i mean besides for you know he does hit a little bit hard sometimes uh if i'm unlucky but with this gear it doesn't even matter like i could just i could just chill the blood fear will heal me up a little bit if i'm really in a pickle i could use the sgs and use death charge to regenerate my special attack faster I call this the lazy Zami method. And of course, if you want the justy set effect, you have to sacrifice your Slayer Helm. So I'm not 100% sure if it's worth doing that or not. If you have an alt or a tank that's going with you, then this is basically just free damage reduction and you get the thrall and the spec spell. So it's really not bad. And the last setup I wanted to test was the melee DPS. This is pretty much what everyone brings to solo Zambi, unless you're doing the five to zero method with the Tebow, but I haven't really learned the method. So I figure it wasn't really up for me to test it. Either way, I think you can take what you learned from this setup and apply it to a five to zero potentially. Just make your own judgments on that. I just want to start this off by saying that this setup with the Arceus spellbook absolutely slaps. The ward, thrall, and spec spells are just a luxury here. In my opinion, all three of these spells are worth bringing over Ancients just for the fact that the ward also works on the minions as well. Most of the time I was getting one to three death charges per Zami kill, which is about 30 to 45% extra special attack energy per kill. 
So that's pretty much an SGS or a Dragon Claw every time. And for this trip, I actually did end up staying here quite a long time. I barely noticed the difference between using Ancient Magics to heal versus using this method. It was, it was really about the same. So my final verdict on Zami is that I kind of wish that the magic was uh, a little bit better. It felt very underpowered. So hopefully they update that or they, they fix the spell or they come out with a boss that has lower magic defense. As far as for tanking, I think it's really good. I think the ward is just an awesome thing to have, as well as the special attack energy for the SGS specs. Then if you're DPSing, I think you want the spell book. If not for the sole reason of just having the thralls and the special attack energy. It's really good. Next up, it was time to go to Bandos. The way I like doing Bandos is the just scythe and prey mage method. It's very relaxed compared to all the other methods. So I think this is going to be a pretty similar comparison to Zami God Morse because it's kind of the same. Of course, the thralls hit very good through the high defense of Bandos and the spec spell is really nice. More dragon claws, but uh, you do lose four inventory slots, which could be a couple anglers or something like that so i did end up doing quite a bit of testing and you'll see that i'm getting about uh 30 second kills i'm not sure why i brought the le because i don't really like the shield flick anyways as it is if you're not going to be soloing or like if you're going with a group of friends or something then 100 bring the rks spellbook it's it's just free extra damage faster kills especially if you don't have some of this higher end gear the thralls and the spec energy is just going to increase your dps and you're going to see a lot higher returns from the spells when you're using lower tier gear you won't be doing as much dps so that extra dps that comes in from the thralls and the spec energy is really going to make a difference in your bandos trips so next up i want I wanted to test the just the sheer setup that I used at Zami. I wanted to test something similar at Bandos because with the Ellie, with the Blood Fury, and with the Archaeus Spellbook, I imagined that it might be pretty good at Bandos. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, this setup really wasn't that bad. As long as you flick the mage, because your magic defense is so low, the mage is just not gonna miss on you at all. But as long as you're flicking the mage in between the Bandos hits, then you should be taking very minimal damage. And then the damage you do take, you're going to be healing back with the Blood Fury. Now with the Thrall there, you're basically adding like two or three max hits to your gear setup. Of course, it ignores defense and it just constantly hits on the boss. Even though we're in this tank setup, we're not really geared for DPS. The Thrall almost makes up for that. I wouldn't say it's as good as the Bandos one, but it was decent. And if you're one of those players who doesn't really, uh, who wants a more relaxed Bandos trip, then this is probably the method for you. And if you go in a group and this is your setup as a tank, even if you take out the LE and just use something like a DFS, this setup was surprisingly better than I had initially thought. I mean, I got like a six kill trip and that was me like not flicking correctly every time and all that stuff. So I mean, overall, the Arceus spellbook is not too bad at Bandos. Now for Sarah Doman, my gear setup consisted of the usual twist the bow setup, the max range, with the T-Bow, Dragon Arrows, then you have the Blowpipe and the Serp Helm to poison the minions when you start the kill. A lot of people thought that this method wouldn't be that good because the Thrall won't be able to keep up with Zilliana when you're running her around the room, but because she's only walking, it, it actually did a pretty good job of keeping up with her. Now, as far as taking down the minions, the Thrall was a very nice help because usually the minions do more damage than the actual boss itself, as long as you're running away correctly. Again, with a lot of these methods where we're comparing Thralls versus uh, the usual setup, it's it comes down to a matter of sustainability in the amount of inventory slots you lose when you bring this setup. Because four slots at Ceridoman is actually quite a bit. Because, you know, if you have a T-Bow or even with Armadale Crossbow, you're going for longer trips. The kill count sucks here. You can always get ecumenical keys, but Ceridoman is generally just more of a sustainability boss and you want your trips to last as long as possible. And losing those four inventory slots is kind of a big deal. So you lose the four inventory slots, plus you factor in the prayer drain from the thralls. Yes, they do more damage. You might get a quicker kill. And while I didn't test this, I do think it'll be worth bringing the thralls if you have a rune crossbow or an ACB because those weapons don't hit nearly as consistently as the Tebow. So that extra 30 to 40 damage per thrall is really going to add up. And I think that's worth the cost of six prayer points. However, with the Tebow, I don't think it's worth it. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't notice a huge difference. And I did bring the spec spell as well with the blowpipe. But again, if you have bones to peaches, then it doesn't really matter. I would say that it's good if you have a crossbow. But if you're T-bowing Sarah, the Archaeus spellbook is not worth bringing to Sarah. Next up, I had KBD. And if you've ever killed KBD with a T-bow, you know that it dies extremely fast. Uh, luckily, it does have a faster respawn time. So at least when you're using a Thrall, you get a couple kills. But 
the other thing is you're sacrificing a few inventory slots to do this and like i said with the tivo you already kill it so fast i don't think the extra dps from the thrall is worth it i honestly think that the three food would be better than bringing this that being said if you don't have a tivo then I would honestly consider bringing the RKS spellbook because as I've mentioned many times in this video, the lower your own DPS is, the more benefit you're gonna get from the thralls. So I would bring it. Next, I tried out the Chaos Fanatic. I've never killed this boss. It's a relatively low level boss that no one really kills, but the thrall does do some extra damage to it. So any extra damage, in my opinion, is always good. The only way I see this actually being used is if you're trying to go for ranks on the high scores for kill count, because this does drop the Chaos Elemental pets, but you're better off just killing the Chaos Elemental itself. But hey, the Thrall does work on it, so at least now you know. And then I also tried the Crazy Archaeologist using the Undead Grasp spell, because, well, I'm on the Archaeus spellbook. Usually you kill this thing with magic. So I figured, hey, I may as well try the new spell, right? The thralls do work on it. So that is very good. And usually you see a lot of lower level Iron Man killing this. So for some reason, if you have not gotten your rune crossbow and you've completed a kingdom divided, then I guess use a thrall here. The undead grass spell sucks. You may as well just use like a trident like people normally do or Ivan's Blast, but you can't use Ivan's Blast now because you're on the RKS spellbook. So it's probably just not worth using the RKS spellbook here, but it does work. Next, I went to Scorpia. And if you've ever killed Scorpia, you know that Ice Barrage is basically a given. Like you need Ice Barrage because you need to freeze them in place. And you also need to kill all the little scorpions that come out to heal them. Well, I tried using the Undead Grass spell, which is kind of like a pseudo uh, Ice Barrage has a chance to hold it in place for like four ticks, which is borderline useless in my opinion. And yeah, it's exactly what you'd expect. It sucked. Just don't bring Archaea Spellbook to Scorp. Just use the normal setup with Ancients, <laughs> please. <laughs> the next worldy boss I tested was the Chaos Elemental. And if you're wondering, it's actually not bad at the Chaos Elemental. I gotta say, it's not bad. Especially if you don't have a crossbow, if you're just doing like a rune crossbow or MSB type of thing. Uh, it's great here. I don't really see any problems with it. It just adds to the method that is already available. And there's no drawbacks like in some of the other bosses that we've tested so far. So I, I give it a thumbs up. Next up is Vedion, aka Cancer, because it is just impossible to kill this thing without getting a team on you. You didn't know the boss is in multi, and it is one of the last active PKing spots there is for groups of people since the removal of the rev caves. Uh, this is me just learning how to do it because I'm dumb and I don't know how to do it. I didn't really get a huge sample size of this boss because, it, like I said, it is just terrible to kill because of all the teams. But if you have a chance to kill this boss or you have people protecting you and you're you're going for it, I would bring the thralls, man. There's not really any downside to bringing them. So I would say go for it. So extra damage and Vedion already has kind of a high defense anyways. Look, I was literally about to get another kill and then I just got TB for five minutes. So what's the point? <laughs> I did end up escaping though, because these guys suck. The next to last wilderness boss I need to cover is Callisto. And let me just tell you, this is probably one of my favorite places to use the thralls. And that is because Callisto normally has a giant, massive defense. Even with the Vigoras Chain Mace, you just don't hit, man. I mean, you hit sometimes, but you don't hit. My little zombie friend, however, does hit because he ignores defense. Usually I'll get one full thrall, if not two on one kill of Callisto. So you're definitely getting your money's worth. Out of all the bosses we've tried so far, this is one of the best ones to use it on. Also, my kill times were incredibly good. I was getting about 20 to 30 kills per hour. Next up, I tested Venonatus. And as you might expect, the thralls were very good there as well. I did not have a cannon going because I wanted to see all the thrall damage. The only downside is inventory space. And at a boss like this, where you're often tallying from PKers and whatnot. It's really not a big deal to lose that inventory space and maybe bank once or twice more because you do get about a full thrall every kill, which is, you know, 
30 to 40 damage. Combine this with a cannon, and I see no reason not to use the thralls at Venonatus. Okay, we finally made it to some of the more end game content. And the first one I want to cover is Chambers of Zarek. First, I'm going to talk about my impression overall of using the spells at Chambers. And then after that, I'll go over how useful the spells are at each boss. So overall, I give this spell book a 9 out of 10, which is pretty high. It's not quite a 10, and I'll tell you why in a bit. But for the most part, you can use the thralls in nearly every room. The death charge spell does work as well, although I found it not quite as useful as uh, the thralls, since it doesn't work on Ulm's hands or anything, and it does cost two additional inventory spaces. What makes the thralls so good is that they also work on Ulm's hand. The mage one hits the mage hand, which is huge, and the melee one works on the melee hand as well. Also, the ranger can hit the head phase. Because of that, I think it's already worth bringing over uh, any of the other spells. Vengeance has some utility in Chambers of Zarek, but I just don't think it's as consistent as the Thralls. The thralls are all consistent damage, whereas Vengeance, it might hit a 1, it might hit a 10, whereas uh, you have a Thrall out for 30 seconds, it's going to guarantee at least like 20 damage. Also, you can't use Vengeance on Ulm, which is like a good portion of every raid. If you're doing team raids, then sure, maybe have one person on Humidify and Vengeance. That might be a good solution. But everyone else who's DPSing, you want them to have the Archaea spellbook. After all the testing I did, I am a firm believer in it. All right, starting with Tecton, the melee thrall works on him. And so does Death Charge when you kill him. Next up is the Crab Room. Get your crab out of there! My word. All right, you need to get the bounce. Jesus. Oh, it does. The uh, the spec thing works in this room. If you When the crabs die, you get spec back. If you cast the spec spell and hit a crab right before you complete the puzzle, you get the spec back. It's pretty cool. The thrall also works on ice demon, and it also works on the shamans. I mean, I could probably skip through all this and just say that the only room it does not work on is the guardian room, because that's kind of expected. You need a pickaxe and... Our, our zombies don't have pickaxes. Maybe we can get a minor zombie as a resurrection. Who knows? Overall, if you're not bringing this to chambers, then what are you doing? Oh, I got a purple, dude. I'm not going to look on your stream. I'm not going to look on your stream. No way. I'm not looking on your stream. I'm opening no it. No fucking way you just got that. It's an arcane, dude. I already know you're trolling when you say, when you say no way. <laughs> No way, dude, the arcane. And then moving on to the Theater of Blood, the Thralls also work on Maiden, and they also hit her red crabs that she spawns. I would say these are fairly solid for Maiden. Vengeance is kind of good here, but I feel like you're going to get more consistent DPS uh, using the Thralls in general. Uh, either way, it's going to be relatively similar. As for Bloat, my zombie was kind of just walking around. I mean, maybe he doesn't want to attack his own kind or something. Now, here's the room where you don't really see that much of a benefit to having the Thralls over Vengeance. Vengeance, I think, is definitely better than this room. Although, I will say, if you're the Ranger, the Thrall isn't too bad because he doesn't have to move around. But if you're meleeing and you're using the melee Thrall, Melee Thrall just takes way too long to get around to places in this room, so it's not worth using. So this is the only room you kind of see it as a drawback compared to Venge. So now we're on Sodas Egg, and this is probably one of the better rooms to use the Thrall because Sodas Egg normally has high defense, especially if you miss your hammers. So anything that ignores defense like the Thralls is going to be a good thing. Next up is Zarpus, and ignoring my very scuffed melee walk, you can see that my skeleton, even though I am not hitting and I'm leeching from the back, that my skeleton is still doing some damage which is good because normally vengeance cannot do anything in this room so this is another room where you're going to benefit from the thrall over vengeance okay the last room the lady verzik herself now what if i told you that the thrall worked on all three of her phases i'm not lying it's just like Ulm. it works on all three of her phases if you've ever done theater of blood with vengeance then you know that it doesn't work on p1 and p2 so having the thrall for p1 and p2 is huge honestly it's it's huge especially p2 and side note i don't have it in this clip but i specifically remember sang staffing one of the crabs with the death charge spell active and it gave me back special attack energy so it might be worth bringing i didn't have it in this clip but i do know for a fact that it works on the crabs and of course the thrall does work on b3 as well i'm pretty sure it's better than vengeance just for the fact that it's always hitting compared to uh like even on the web phase it's still going to be hitting Verzik, and I think because of that, it's going to be better than Vengeance. It might be pretty close, honestly, but considering all the other benefits that you get from using the Thrall in the Theater of Blood itself, 
Uh, yeah, I think it's worth it. I think it's really good here. As far as speedrunning goes, I heard of some teams doing like a spellbook swap. I think what it would be is like vengeance for the first three raids, and then you spellbook swap over to the thrall for the last three rooms. I think that would be pretty viable as far as speedrunning goes, and honestly, it's probably a new meta. I think there's still a lot of uh, research that needs to be done for these thralls. Overall, my impression is that they are very useful in a lot of different places, especially raids. Now, I know this has been an extremely long and informative video, but I saved the best for last because the Arceus spellbook at Nightmare is absolutely game changing. You get full usage of the thralls and if you use the mage one on the pillars, then the mage damage is double. So instead of the max hit being three on the pillars, uh, the ghost can hit six. So for the entire kill, you get to use the thrall and it does damage to the nightmare. On top of that, you also get full usage of death's charge on all the mobs that spawn. So for the husks, for the parasites, and for the sleepwalkers, you can proc a death charge to get that extra 15% percent special attack energy in a duo this is about 75 percent to 90 percent special attack energy that you would not normally have and that's not counting your natural regen for the specs so in a duo this does give you about two extra specs that you normally wouldn't have in a solo it's probably closer to four extra specs so how does this compare to conventional methods well the only alternative to the Arceus spellbook is the normal spellbook using a harmonized nightmare staff with the fire surge spell and a tome of fire. Since the thrall ignores defense, a thrall has a DPS of 0.625, and this is for the melee phases for the entire kill. And since the damage is doubled on the pillars, that's a DPS increase of 1.25 when you're maging. Now, when you look at the numbers and you add the thrall DPS into the saying setup, you might say, well, Ingus, that's still lower than the harm orb DPS. Well, yes, technically that is correct, but for 80% of the kill, you have an extra 0.625 DPS because you're using the thrall while you're meleeing it which makes the overall kill times faster. Because other than using the fire surge on the totems, there's no actual benefit to being on the standard spell. While it may not be as high DPS as the staff, you get a much bigger benefit for the overall kill by using the Arceus spellbook. And this isn't even factoring in the extra special attacks that you get from using death charge. So if there's anything that you're gonna take away from this video, it's that you should really sell that harmonized orb right now because that shit is gonna crash when this video gets out. <laughs> I'm sorry if you have one. I tried to warn everyone I do. So anyways, this video is already super long, so I don't want to keep you guys any longer. These are all my findings that I tested. If you have any ideas for what I should test next or how the Arceus spellbook can be used in different places that I didn't cover, then please leave a comment. Let me know. I'd love to test out this spellbook even more because I am having a ton of fun using it. So anyways, leave a like if you found this video helpful. Also, be sure to check out my Twitch stream. I plan to stream some of the new hard mode nightmare when that comes out on June 30th. I don't really have a time, but trust me, I will be live on that day. Take care and I will see you in the next one.